Hello Steelers and welcome to this tutorial video in which I'm going to show you how I went about making, painting and weathering this 156 scale SDKFZ222. This model is from the Warlord Games A Gentleman's War bolt action box set, but you can also buy them individually if you want. The box allows you to build the 222 or the 223 version of this vehicle, but I decided on the 222. I painted it as though it's in use by the Africa Cove and has been weathered by the harsh desert conditions. Of course, I will put a list of all the paints and the materials that I used in the description below, along with the Warlord Games affiliate link, which will help out the channel if you use to buy your models. The SDK FZ222 was a main light armoured car used by the Wehrmacht throughout the Second World War, and was an upgraded and up-armoured version of the 221, which had been developed and produced previously. The 222 was crewed by three men, a driver, a commander and a gunner, and the latter handled a 20cm autocannon and a coaxially mounted machine gun. Earlier on this was an MG34 but then was replaced with an MG42. Just under a thousand 222 variants were produced between 1937 and 1943, and it was gradually replaced by the SDK FZ250 as a half-track light reconnaissance vehicle. However, it did remain in service throughout the entire war. When the Soviet army captured examples of the 222 during the invasion of Russia, they studied the design and produced their own light reconnaissance vehicle in the form of the BA-64. The 223 version of the vehicle had a radio antenna attached and was used as a radio vehicle with a radio operator replacing the gunner that was in the 222. The 222 was used extensively in the Western Desert by the Africa Corps and it's one of their vehicles that I'm going to be painting in this video. As I mentioned, there are enough pieces to make either the 222 or the 223 version of the vehicle, but I decided to go with the 222. How many times can I say 222 in this video? The model comes on two sprues, and I spent some time familiarising myself with the layout and the pieces on each. The instructions that come with the Gentleman's War box set are not particularly clear, even though all the pieces are numbered on the sprues, in the instructions they seem to have been missed off. So it takes a little while to find the individual pieces on the sprue and then exactly where they're going to go on the model. I use the painting guide picture to also help with this. With a little bit of time and patience I slowly got the kit together. This minor gripe aside, the model is a lovely build and it went together really smoothly with all the pieces fitting snugly with the minimum fuss. I would certainly recommend dry fitting before you use polystyrene cement to glue any of the pieces in place though. I also use tweezers for some of the smaller parts so that they can be quite fiddly in places. I built the chassis and tore it separately and separated the wheels just for now because I wanted to be able to paint in the wheel wells without too much trouble. I also added some third party stowage that I bought on eBay as vehicles in service get very quickly covered in blankets, bags and other things that have been picked up along the way. Then I super glued the model to an own paint bottle. Don't worry about this, it will just snap off when I finish painting. I didn't bother priming the model and I used the base colour of Vallejo's tan yellow for the vehicle. This is close enough to my eye for the yellow used by the Africa Corps and vehicles will be in a variety of shades anyway in the desert atmospheres. For this I just used a big brush and I went over the entire model, including the turret and also the wheel hubs. As I have not primed, this will need a second coat, so I did that once the first coat was dry. It might be that you might need a third coat here. Just do whatever needs to be done. Once the base coat was dry, I then added some decals. These are water slide and they come with the model and they work really well. I just cut out the few that I needed because some were going to be covered by stowage. So I only used a couple of the decals supplied and I put them in a small amount of water. Then using a very small brush, I picked them off the backing paper and got them into the places that I needed on the model itself. I then let the decals dry and I took a big soft brush and dry brushed Vallejo's dark sand across the entire model. This is a very simple technique of applying paint to the brush then wiping off as much of the wet paint as possible on an old rag or a kitchen towel. Then, very slowly and softly, I brushed the paint across the corners of the model just to pick up the highlights and the raised areas. Don't do too much, work slowly and build it up because it's easier to add more paint than it is to take it away in this case. If you do make any mistakes and make a mess, you can always just repaint it in the original base colour anyway. With the vehicle dry brushed, I then turn to the filter. And for this, I'm using a MIG filter brown for dark yellow. This is an enamel wash, which has got a very strong capillary action, 
which means that it gets right into the nooks and crannies of the armoured car. I give the model a very good wash in this, ensuring a good coverage across everything, including the wheel hubs and the turret. It goes on quite dark initially, but it will dry and has a really nice texture to it. One of the good things about the filter is that it can also be reactivated by using white spirits. So using a cotton bud dipped in some white spirits, I went back and wiped off some of the filter where it had gone too thick. However, I left bits in the recesses, which created a nice crime and shadow effect. It's a very basic weathering technique, and you could certainly leave things here if you wanted to, but I didn't, I wanted to push it a little bit further. The harsh desert climate made a real mess of any paintwork, wearing it away and chipping the paint off. And this is very easily replicated with a ripped up piece of sponge and Germo Camo Black Brown from Vallejo. I simply dipped the sponge in the paint and then I dabbed it on a cloth or similar and then I dabbed the sponge over the edges of the model where chips would naturally form. I also paid attention to areas around hatches or other places where heavy wearing patterns would take place. And of course, once a vehicle has been chipped, rust is going to form pretty quickly. And for this, I used Flory Wash Rust. This is a clay wash that goes on very bright, but it dries with a nice rusty look and a texture. You can also reactivate it later with water, but for this particular model I just painted streaks where I wanted them with a small brush. Then using Flory Wash Grime, I went over some of the smaller details and did what is called a pin wash, just to emphasise the areas where dirt would naturally build up. This was done exactly the same as with the rust, and I left it to dry. Meanwhile, I painted the tyres in black. I was just very careful and I used a very small brush around the rims, but it doesn't matter if there's spillage here because I don't can always cover things up anyway with weathering. Once the black was dry, and then for the basic weathering of the tyres, I used a dry brush of German Camo Beige. This was just lightly dry brushed to the areas where dust and grime and dirt will gather. Then it was time to paint the stowage. I just painted it in various greens and beiges just to emphasise the idea that it had been picked up at various times and it was not part of a specific kit. I didn't film all of this so you're just going to have to imagine it. But I also painted the shovel in oily steel for the blade and then also beige brown for the wood. When all the stowage was dry, I gave everything a wash in Agrax Earthshade by Citadel. This is another nice wash that gets into all the creases of the materials and it just adds a little bit extra shading. Then when the Agrax had thoroughly dried, I gave the stowage a light dry brush in the base colours, slowly building up the lighter shades just to emphasise the creases and the raised areas once again. Whilst all this was happening, I also began painting the exhaust. There's two of these on the rear of the vehicle and usually the paint has burnt off and they can get very rusty. So I began by painting them both in black. I was just very careful not to get the paint elsewhere. Then I painted oily steel over the top in quite a rough manner. This is quite a heavy dry brush, so you can still see some of the black below. And then finally I went back and I washed the exhaust in Flory Wash Rust. Again, it's quite bright when it goes on, as you can see here, but it soon dries to a nice subtle colour with a bit of texture. Then whilst all the painted bits on the chassis dried, I turned back to the auto cannon and the machine gun in the turret. This was simply painted in gunmetal grey. I would just be careful here again not to get this onto other parts of the model and then I finally washed with Agrax Earthshade from Citadel. Then I moved into the final bits of weathering and this was done by using weathering powders. These ones are from Revel, but there's lots to choose from on the market. One thing that they do have in common is that they are very messy. So I used a kitchen towel to catch the powder as I'm working and I used a big and an old brush to apply the powders across the wheels and the recesses below the chassis and also as a tide mark across the bottom of the vehicle. You could add a couple of other colours here if you wanted to, but I just wanted a simple sand colour. Then, it was finally a case of fixing those wheels in place, and adding the grenade cover to the turret top. Then, I varnished the model, and it was completed. And here it is. The process may seem complicated, but it really isn't. It's just a case of taking each stage of weathering at a time, and working on the model over a few days. Most of these techniques are very easy to learn, and just use the basic tools that gamers have already. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave a comment and a like. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. And I'll see you in the next Storm of Steel video.